I'm Kelly Wayman, and today I'm going to talk about the Silhouette Cameo 4. This cutting machine has more speed, power, and other unique features that sets it apart from any previous Silhouette model. We'll explore new possibilities in this class with the Cameo 4. Here are some key features of the Cameo 4. Like all previous Silhouette cutters, like the Portrait and older Cameo models, this is an excellent machine for cutting paper, vinyl, heat transfer, sticker sheets, and other specialty materials. Here are some new features with the Cameo 4 series of cutting machines. It has a sliding lid to keep the design compact. The backlit touch panel is simple to use and very responsive. The roller adjustment is quick and easy with a one-hand adjustment. It has a 3 mm clearance for thicker materials. It contains a built-in roll feeder and a built-in rotary cross cutter that makes it easy to load, cut, and trim off vinyl and heat transfer directly from the roll. I'll show you how to do this as we complete a vinyl project later. The dual carriage has an automatic tool detection and the two carriages perform different tasks with new tools we'll talk about in a minute. The Cameo 4 Autoblade now has a one-touch reset and then counts up, making it faster to get ready for most common materials when compared to the Cameo 3 Autoblade. Because of the new tool system, you can still use the tools that fit older machines, but you need adapters to make them fit and use the automatic tool detection. Let's briefly talk about the adapters. The black adapter holds the original blade and the premium blade. Place the lip of the blade into the groove of the adapter and there's a spot for the fin on the ratchet blade. If you want to use your deep cut blade, use the gray adapter. The 2 mm craft blade fits into the white adapter. To use a silhouette sketch pen, you need to use the newer black body style and insert it into the blue adapter. The black body style has a lip that fits into the groove and the older white body style cannot be used with the Cameo 4. The blue adapter also holds the older white adjustable pen holder. Or you can buy an adjustable pen holder specifically for the Cameo 4. The blade you will typically use with the Cameo 4 is the Cameo 4 Auto Blade, which comes with the machine. The Cameo 4 Auto Blade does not need an adapter because it already has the correct shape and automatic tool detection capability. When you install any tool into the carriage, the flat side goes toward the back. Make sure it's fully seated by pressing down on the tool while pushing the lock in towards the tool. You can see how the lock grabs the tool when it's inserted correctly. Notice how all these adapters and tools I've shown so far have a number one on them. These can only be used in the left tool carriage, which is also marked with a number one. Next, we're going to talk about some specialty tools that go in carriage two on the right side. The rotary blade is only for use with the Cameo 4 models and is sold separately. This blade provides an alternate method of cutting by having the blade roll across your material. The rotary blade is great for cutting materials like fabric, felt, leather, and crepe paper. With the rotary blade, none of these materials need a stabilizer backing. I'll demonstrate this with a felt project. The supplies I'm using are felt in red, green, and brown, a sticky standard mat, a brayer, which can just be a cardboard tube, hot glue or a needle and thread, and polyester stuffing. There's nothing fancy about this particular felt, I got it from my local craft store. Insert a rotary blade into the carriage too. Roll the collar to expose it for the first time. No other adjustment is necessary.
As we move into the design stage, you should note that while the rotary blade opens new possibilities with cuttable materials, there are some limitations to your design choice. Basically, do not go too small or too detailed. We have a rotary blade guide you can find on Silhouette101.com that goes into a deeper explanation. Let's move into the software. In Silhouette Studio, open your library and find the design Apple Slip Lid Box. If you want to purchase this one, it's number 135311 in the design store. So we'll ungroup this. And I want to delete everything except the apple stem and leaf. So I'm going to keep these. Ungroup again. And then I can delete all these others. All right, so I'm going to mirror a duplicate of the apple. Let's go up to Object, Replicate, and Mirror Right. And then I want to resize this all at once. So my apple is about four inches wide. So I'll just turn on my grid, hitting the letter G, and I'll select it all. And I want the apple to be about four inches. That looks about right. Okay, so now I want to make sure that my media size is set to the same size as my felt. And so I'm going to make sure my machine shows Cameo. I'm going to be using a 12 inch cutting mat. And my media size, the height can stay at nine in, or 12 inches and the width I'm going to set to nine inches. All right, now I want to arrange the apples on the page. I'll move these off to the side to cut with a different color of felt. All right, and in the Send tab, I'm going to select my objects. And I want these to cut with Tool 2. So I'm going to collapse and hide Tool 1 and click on the arrow to expose Tool 2. And you can see that it shows my rotary blade is detected because I've put my rotary blade in there. I also want to make sure that my machine is connected. Click down here if you need to. So with my objects selected in Tool 2, I want my material to be felt acrylic. And then I want to choose Rotary Cut. Now, if you don't have a tool inserted or if you try to choose a material that's not a good match for the rotary blade, a message will tell you that it's not compatible. To use tool two, you have to have it inserted and choose a material that's appropriate for that tool. You've seen that my preview cut lines have turned blue as it activates the smart cut lines, which gives it hooks and loops. So because the rotary blade is not like, not a traditional blade in that it's tiny and can turn sharp corners, it needs these ho hooks and loops to orient the, ra the rotary blade as it prepares to cut corners and turns. And when it does cut, you'll see that the action of this blade is a little different than you might be used to. Um, it will make extra lifts and turns that you don't see when it's cutting with a regular blade in carriage one. So once I get my material loaded, I'll go ahead and click send to cut this with the rotary blade. Okay, so we're gonna put this nine by 12 inch felt onto the cutting mat. And we'll use the brayer to roll it down. And for the brayer, I just use an empty vinyl cardboard tube. It works great. I've found that with any material I'm cutting with the rotary blade, like felt or fabric or crepe paper, it does well with a sticky mat and being pressed down really well with a brayer. And the, the 
rotary blade is already inserted, and so we'll go ahead and load this. And send it. So we'll unload this. And now we can get our pieces off the mat. Use a spatula tool if that helps. Try not to stretch it as you're pulling it off. Okay, and I've already I've already cut my green and brown pieces from other felt, and so this is ready to go. I'm gonna hot glue hot glue the stem, and then I'm just going to make a little bead along here and eventually I'm going to make it with a little pocket that's open on the bottom so I can fit the stuffing inside of it. And you could use needle and thread if you wanted to do like a little blanket stitch. Hot glue is easy on felt though. Okay, so we'll just put a little bit of stuffing in there. So it looks fairly even and just seal it up with more hot glue. And if you get a little extra stuffing sticking out the side, that's fine. You can just take care of that with trimming with a little bit of scissors. Also, any extra glue you can trim off with scissors. Add the little leaf. And I've used felt here, but the rotary blade works great with fabric also. That's a fun way to use your designs for felt. The rotary blade also works great for cutting fabric without a stabilizer, leather, and crepe paper. Now let's talk about the punch tool. This tool is another special tool sold separately that can be used in Carriage 2 of the Cameo 4 series of machines. The punch tool allows you to punch weeding points in your vinyl and heat transfer projects. The weeding points make it easier to weed your material once cutting is complete. We'll also use the new built-in rotary cross cutter in the back of the Cameo 4 and the built-in roll feeder. Let me show you how these work with a vinyl project. The supplies you'll need for this project are a roll of vinyl, a hook tool for weeding, a small ceramic tile, transfer tape, and a scraper. I'll place my Cameo 4 Auto Blade in Carriage 1 and the Punch Tool in Carriage 2. In a new document in Silhouette Studio, Go into the library and open XOXO, which is design number 118205. We'll resize this to fit the surface we're going to apply it to. My subway tile area is about, uh, lets this be about two inches tall, and which makes this about four inches wide. So into the page setup, we want to make sure that machine says Cameo, the cutting mat, 
is going to be none. And my media width is going to be 12 inches wide uh, because I'm using a 12 inch roll of vinyl. Uh, I want my height to be at least 12 inches because I'm cutting from the roll. So we'll position the design near the upper left corner of the page to conserve material. And then we'll go ahead and go into the send tab. All right, for tool one, it detects my auto blade right there. And so I can choose the material as vinyl metallic. Then I know I want to adjust this based on prior test cuts to uh, blade at two and two passes. Okay, so for the tool two material, I also want to choose vinyl metallic. Now you can see that the punch marks have appeared on the preview. This only happens when you have the correct material chosen like vinyl or heat transfer and the punch tool is detected in carriage two. When we send it to cut, it will cut first with the auto blade and then it'll mark these weeding points with the punch tool. Now, if you decide you don't want the punch marks, it's easier to just remove the tool instead of trying to turn it off over here in the software. And since I wanna use the cross cutter in the back of my machine with vinyl, I'm gonna change an advanced feed setting. So I'm gonna click on this settings icon, the gear icon in the lower right corner. And on feed options, I want it to show feed or advanced to cutter. This is gonna feed the finished vinyl cutout through the machine after cutting so it's ready to use the cross cutter. And that way we don't have to use the arrows on the machine to manually advance it for trimming. Now make sure when you're done with this project that you set it back to return to origin when you're finished with the project so you're not, if you're not cutting vinyl or heat transfer off the roll all the time. Okay, so we are ready to load that and once that's all loaded in my machine, I will go ahead and send it to cut and then punch. Okay, so to put the vinyl that's 12 inches into the Cameo 4, we need to adjust the rollers. So just one finger, press that little button and slide it in. These arrows should always line up with this roller piece. Lock that back in place. And then we're gonna use the built-in roll feeder Just put the vinyl in so it's feeding towards, goes over the top and feeds towards the machine. S slide that together to snug it up. Put it through the slot. And then we're ready to have the machine feed that in. So we'll line up the left edge over here and make sure that the rollers are gripping the vinyl completely on each side. And then load. So that has sped through because we chose the feed option in those settings. And now we just pull these two tabs down and that's gonna hold the vinyl in place and then just roll the cross cutter across. Make sure that you always lift this back up when you're done slicing so it doesn't interfere with things coming out of the back of the machine next time you cut. All right, so we've got our vinyl that's been cut. I'm just gonna trim this off so I'm saving the uncut part for later. So the punch tool has created little tiny weed marks that make it easy to see what part should be weeded 
So you can use those as a guide when you're using your hook tool to weed those unwanted parts away. Okay, so we've got that weeded. And we will just use some transfer tape, pick up that design. And just center it on the tile. Scrape it down. And we'll remove the transfer tape. And that's all finished. We've talked about the rotary blade and the punch tool for Carriage 2 in the Cameo 4. There's also a 3mm craft blade for the Cameo 4 that cuts another range of materials, and we'll cover that blade in a separate class. But now I want to go over another feature introduced with the Cameo 4, which is pop-out cutting. Pop-out cutting is a type of matless cutting. We just did one type of matless cutting with vinyl, where the blade did a kiss cut into the material while leaving the backing intact, and no mat was necessary. Pop-out cutting also uses no mat, but it does not require a backing on the material because of a channel that runs under the blade area. Some select paper and cardstock materials with no backing can be fed directly into the Cameo 4 and newer models with this channel. The blade in a pop-out cut cuts all the way through the material with a special cutting action that allows you to pop the cut job out once the cutting action has been completed. Let's make another project to see how this works. In Silhouette Studio, we'll go back and set those advanced seed feed settings back to return to origin from the last project in case you haven't already done so. All right, so now we're going to print and cut some labels from cardstock with no mat. So let's start by setting the page setup correctly. We're going to go to machine and set that to cameo. The cutting mat, again, we want to none. And media size, we want as letter. Now choosing no mat here and choosing appropriate appropriate material type later is what's going to activate the choice for pop-out cutting. You can use pop-out cutting when your media size fits your rollers exactly. So like you could use letter size cardstock or 12 by 12 inch cardstock. Pop-out cutting is good for things like prepping multiples of the same thing or avoiding curl when you use an extra sticky mat with your cardstock. So let's go to the library and we're going to open the get well tissue wrap hedgehog and if you want to purchase that design it's number three zero 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 we'll ungroup this and divide it into cut pieces and print pieces so there's a couple pieces that are printable and then all these other pieces are cut pieces that we will cut with different colors of cardstock and paper. Now you don't have to use print and cut for pop-out cutting. I'm just using it for this example. You can cut stiff paper without registration marks. I'm going to use the pop-out cutting just for these uh, labels and I'm going to cut these colored pieces with smaller pieces on my mat since there'll be scraps and they'll work better on my mat. So let's turn on the registration marks for print and cut, which is just the third tab on the page setup panel and click, click on. And let's move these down. And arrange them line up on the top 
and then I'm just going to hit my control or command key and my down arrow to make copies of these and then just use my shift and arrow key to move these down a little bit and spread them apart. Okay, so make sure with the print and cut that you are within the cut border and that you're staying out of these crosshatch areas. Now I've got this file saved already the way I had it, oh, I wanted it, and so this one is ready to print. So I can just go ahead and click the print icon. And I can see that looks good. I have no visible lines that shouldn't be showing and I, my registration marks are on. So I can go ahead and click print and choose my printer that I want, set up anything I need for preferences. If you wanna turn it darker or change uh, the paper feed, but when that's ready, you can go ahead and click print. Now I want to make sure that my auto blade is in carriage one, which it is. So when I go to the send tab, that's going to detect my auto blade. And if I choose my material as cardstock plain, and the auto blade is inserted and I have no mat selected, that automatically gives me an action for the pop out cut, which is what I want. Now uh, I'm going to adjust my force and my speed on this. Uh, I've already tested this, which is a good idea with pop out cutting. You wanna make sure that you're checking with your blade and your material to make sure you get the right kind of cut. So this one I'm gonna do Force or blade on four, force 22, speed is three. And this design that has some sharp points, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the line segment overcut and that's gonna help with the corners. So once my printout is loaded into the machine, uh, I'll click send. And I just wanna tell you that when you're seeing the pop out cut with the blade, you probably won't see the blade moving up and down as it cuts, but you might hear kind of a railroad sound as it moves along that's the pop out cut action. So it looks like we're ready, so we'll send that as soon as we've got our printout loaded into the Cameo. So I'll just grab my printout, and I'm gonna load it into my Cameo 4 without a mat, and so I need to adjust my ruler so it's gonna grip that paper. I'll bring down the lock, push the button to slide it over and feel it settle into the right groove and lift the lever back up so it's locked in place. And so now I'll just line up my paper here with the loading line and it's gripped both sides and load. And that's ready to send. So we've got these cut, and you can see that they're still attached right now, almost completely, but they're still, but they're easy to pop out. So we're just gonna pop those out. And we'll go ahead and, I've already got my other pieces cut out and I've started putting this card together. So we'll just finish assembling this card. the little eyeball on my hedgehog. And I'll add my labels.
with some adhesive. I think I'm going to use some little pop out dots for this hedgehog to make him stand off the page a little bit. paper crafts are still an awesome way to use your cameo machine. One last little decorative element. Finish that off with the adhesive, and we can stick our stick our tissues in as soon as that's in place. Pop-out cutting has some nice advantages when you don't want to use a mat for stiff materials like cardstock. I hope you've learned a lot about the Silhouette Cameo 4 series of cutting machine. I've covered the newer features and upgrades of this special machine, but it can still perform the popular tasks of previous Cameo models. To see our in-depth classes on how to use all the capabilities of your Cameo, check out the Silhouette 101 video class playlist on Silhouette's YouTube channel. And as always, you'll find plenty of inspiration and instruction on Silhouette101.com. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy exploring the new possibilities with your Cameo 4.